parents with young children face a lot of challenges. A lot of challenges in simple things like mealtime and even just trying to get out of the house. God blessed my wife and I with three children born very close in age, twins and then one that's 20 months younger. So at the very beginning, we had three children under the age of two. It was an exciting time. And trying to get out of the house was nearly impossible. It took us hours of preparation and getting everything ready to go. And as soon as we had all the bags packed, everything loaded, everything we thought we needed, we would turn around and there would be our sons without shoes. Trying to find their shoes, to get them to put their shoes on, to keep their shoes on, was nearly impossible. And we, in some moments of exasperation, would turn around and say, would you just get your shoes on? Paul is writing to us here at the end of Ephesians telling us, get your shoes on. Put your shoes on. Remember, his theme has been grace and unity throughout this letter. And now he's applying that to our Christian commission, this fight we are called to in the spiritual realm. Paul tells us that we face a cosmic spiritual foe with whom we will wrestle until Jesus returns. And Paul tells us the essential armor for this battle. For today, put your shoes on. Again, hear the passage from the book of Ephesians. We'll read beginning in verse 10 down through verse 18, but today we're keying in on verse 16. Paul writes in Ephesians 6:10, "Finally be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places." Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying at all times with all prayer and supplication. This is the Word of the Lord. As I mentioned, the main point I want us to see today from verse 15 is put your shoes on so that you are ready with the gospel. Verse 15, one more time. And as shoes for your feet, having put on, put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. This verse is a little bit more convoluted than the others. Literally, if you were to translate, translate it, and put shoes on your feet in readiness for the gospel of peace. Paul is asserting here that you need gospel feet. This is an image that he draws on in Romans 10 as well as he quotes Isaiah 52 verse 7 saying, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Gospel feet are those that bring the good news of the gospel. As part of the armor, your shoes go on your feet to enable you to have sure footing and to advance. What this verse is really getting at is put your shoes on so that you're ready. If you don't have your shoes on, you're not ready. I remember when I was in high school, I was a part of a conference in the mountains of North Carolina. And every time we would go to this conference, one day of the year, one day of the week of that conference, they would climb to the top of the mountain to watch the sunrise. I remember I was eager and enthusiastic. I wanted to get up, so I had somebody come in and wake me up to go see this sunrise on the mountaintop. They came in and woke me up, and then I rolled over and had to get my shoes on. By the time I got my shoes on, the group had already left. I wasn't ready because I didn't have my shoes on, so I missed being able to get to the top of the mountain to see the sunrise on that day. Paul is telling us we need to put our shoes on so that we are ready. Why put your shoes on? To be ready for the gospel. Again, look at verse 15. And as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. Ready for what? Ready for the gospel. How? First, ready to stand firm. Paul's calling us to stand firm because we live in an evil day. In the exhortation from earlier on, having done all to stand at all cost with all effort, your sure footing 
in spiritual conflict is supplied by the gospel spiritually you can stand with a rock solid foundation because that foundation is jesus christ as the old hymn says on christ the solid rock i stand all other ground is sinking sand when all around my soul gives way he then is all my hope and my stay jesus is the truth and no other attempts at truth can topple his authority so brother and sister put your shoes on so that you can stand firm in the gospel the second reason why we are to be ready why we are to put our shoes on to be ready is to be ready to advance to be ready to stand first and second to be ready to advance i've always thought that here in the armor that we are given in ephesians chapter 6 there are only two offensive weapons the sword of the spirit which is the word of god and prayer which we are called to at the end the roman army didn't have a walkie-talkie system so he just adds prayer in there but in reality the shoes are part of the the offensive equipment they're there so that you are ready to move forward. We are called to move with the gospel. Colossians is a parallel letter to Ephesians. And in chapters 3 and 4, we see similar content that we do in the latter half of Ephesians. Uh, and after the relational section in the book of Colossians, after he te tells you how to, how to work out the, the gospel in your relationships, we read this in chapter 4, verses 5 and 6 about moving with the gospel. Colossians 4, 5, and 6 says, Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how, to, how you ought to answer each person. Again, in Peter, Peter says that in chapter 3, verse 15, But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make an offense to anyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. The best defense is a good offense every day amid the spiritual battle there are gospel opportunities so we need to be ready to move ready to speak ready to advance the great commission says make disciples as you are going every day put your shoes on so that you are ready to advance with the gospel the third reason that we're given here to put our shoes on is that we would be ready with the gospel of peace it's an odd phrase right he's talking about spiritual war and yet he asserts that it's the gospel of peace how is it that the gospel brings peace in the midst of a spiritual war two things here the christian has peace with god romans 5 1 tells us therefore since we have been justified by faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ colossians 2 13 through 15 reads and you who were once dead in your trespasses, the uncircumcision in your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities, put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. Your sure footing is established in the gospel. Your peace with God is established through what Christ has done, canceling your debts, taking you from being a debtor to being a beloved child of God. Satan and his allies have no legal claim on you. You have been bought with a price. You belong to God. Christian, you have peace with God. The second thing we see in this is that while we have peace with God, we are called to offer that peace to others. Read what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, all has come new. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself, that's giving peace to us, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, Christ was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. It is the advance of the gospel that brings peace to the nations. 
I remember in the first big Avengers movie how Loki, he's the bad guy in the story, he comes to an adversary and he touches their chest with his staff and immediately the hostility ends and they are drawn to Loki's side. Now, the illustration breaks down because Loki's the bad guy in the movie, but the gospel touches the hearts of men and women and brings them to peace with God. The gospel brings you to peace. It brings the lost to peace. It brings the nations to peace with God as we advance with it. So brothers and sisters, put your shoes on to be ready to stand firm and advance with the gospel of peace. So now the critical question, how do you do this? How do you put on spiritual gospel shoes? Any competitive runner will tell you you don't get new shoes the day of the race. You want to wear the shoes to break them in so that they mold to your foot, so that they, they, they fit comfortably. You don't wear a blister on or anything like that. So how do you do this with the gospel shoes? Personally, you need to know the gospel. You need to understand that while God made us all in His image and made, it, made all things good, we as humanity rebelled against Him. You need to understand that that rebellion against God leaves you deserving death and judgment and hell. Yet God in His love sent Christ. God the Son came and wrapped Himself in our flesh, dying the death that you deserve, and was raised to life, securing your eternal righteousness. All who trust in Him will be eternally forgiven and clothed in the perfection of Jesus Christ. You need to know this gospel. You need to understand it and understand how it applies to you, and you need to make it personal. It's not just some out there information. This is, ought to be your story, your hope, the gospel that has saved your life. We also need to make the gospel your lifelong study. Devote yourself to reading the scripture, to prayer, to Christian fellowship in the, in the local church. And you need to love God with all that you are. This is the great commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love him for who he is. Love him for what he has done. Love him for all that he has promised for you. Wake up every day. Rehearse the truth of the gospel to yourself, putting your shoes on so that you will be ready. Be ready to stand firm and to advance with the gospel. Brothers and sisters, put your shoes on.